One of the Australian films screening at this year's BOFA uh, Tasmanian Film Festival is Zach's Ceremony. And it's my great pleasure to be sitting opposite the director of Zach's Ceremony, Aaron Peterson. Aaron, welcome to the program. Great. Thank you very much. Now, this is such an intriguing story uh, about an Aboriginal boy and uh, going into manhood and, and the uh, issues he faces with his culture and uh, modern day life and so on, how he deals with that. What was the inspiration be- uh, behind making the documentary? Uh, the inspiration for me was more one out of interest. Um, I grew up in a, during a generation when not a lot of um, not a lot of my fellow school students or people around the country in the 80s weren't really taught about Aboriginal culture. So, um, you know, when I became older, um, obviously had the ability to be able to start taking my own interest in subjects. Uh, you know, Aboriginal culture was something that I always wanted to learn more about. It's it's here in Australia. It exists. Uh, it's alive, and uh, for me personally, I just I just needed to know more. Um, when I uh, came across the story, I met Alec um, Dumaji, who's Zach's father, back in um, 2009. We were working on another TV show together, uh-huh. and uh, and at the, he was a voiceover artist and presenter at the time uh, on the particular TV series. And he was telling me these stories about um, his son and what his plans were to go through his ancient rite of initiation. And, yep. and for me, I was immediately engaged in that because at the time I had a two-year-old boy and a newborn um, boy and, uh, and I suddenly thought I had nothing like that in my culture to celebrate with my son. So for me, just immediately became engaged. Okay. So what were some of the challenges you faced in making the film and, uh, uh, and getting what you wanted right in the documentary? Uh, loads of challenges. Um, I'm non-indigenous, so uh, for me to be uh, even producing or directing a, um, an indigenous uh, feature-length doco was always going to be a challenge. Um, but you know, when we when we dove into it all those years ago, we really didn't know what we were getting into. Australia was a very different place back then. Yeah, it's gone through a huge transition in the last five years, especially. Um, around Indigenous subjects and themes and and the issues um, politically and amongst uh, most Australians. Um, So I've been a part of that transition, which which has been good, and it's taught me a lot. Um, A lot of credit goes to Alec and Zach themselves. Um, You know, they... They took me under their wing. They introduced me to their community, their people, their culture, um, their country, you know, their world. And uh, I'm incredibly grateful for that because for me personally, completely um, transitioned um, my belief and understandings and, and awareness of uh, Indigenous Australians. So a lot of the challenges that came from filming um, were pretty much, uh, I mean, the universal challenges behind any filmmaking process, you know, getting access to the locations, getting access to the people. Uh, you know, this is an Indigenous film told by Indigenous people. And so uh, in my, my position in the film is simply an enabler as, as the director. So, you know, Zach had the opportunity to um, tell a story to the camera, um, same with Alec. And once uh, they understood who I was and what my um, ability was to be able to capture that story, <laughs> the world was their oyster. Um, we ended up with 450 hours worth of footage <laughs> at the end of it, so you can get an idea of how much content we had to work with. Uh, I can imagine the editing process itself yeah. would have been a, a fun and games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the editing process itself took nearly a year uh, in post-production. So me and, me and uh, the producer, Sarah Linton, uh, sat there for a lot of late nights and weekends trying to work through all the material. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, it's it's filmmaking. That's the love of it. That's why we do it. And uh, and for both of us, we walked out, uh, you know, incredibly educated in in that space now. So okay. And, and during the filming process, how yeah. much of it was negotiated? How much of it was uh, was off limits that you were asked not to film? You know, that sort of decision making along the way. Yeah. Again, a lot of credit goes to Alec here. Um, uh, the, where we filmed was uh, three locations. We filmed in um, Doomagy in far north Queensland, uh, which is right in the Gulf of Carpentaria, um, right up the tip there. Uh, and then we also filmed in a place called Borroloola and Robinson River, uh, both over the border in Northern Territory. Uh-huh. 
Alec, um, you know, Alec has had this vision to create this film for a long time. So he spent a lot of time with the uh, with his family up there, with the elders, with the community, uh-huh. taking cameras up there over the course of ten years, getting people used to. I mean, little handy cams type thing, but yeah. still getting them used to camera, a camera being around and being on the other side of a camera as well. So yep. um, once we rocked up a couple of years later, uh, they were. You know, they knew we were coming, they were expecting us to come, which was great because Alec had prepared it all. But, you know, they were also then comfortable with the idea of a camera being around. So, you know, Alec allowed a lot of access to these areas. Um, he negotiated uh, with the elders. I negotiated with the elders as well once we got up there. They had to learn who I was, the same as Alec and Zach had to um, know who I was and I had to gain their trust. The same thing applied with a lot of the elders up there. So, um, you know, they all, everybody played an incredibly important role in making sure that we were able to tell the best possible story, or well, their story, as we could. Um, for me, again, I just sat back, uh, observed. You know, we were there at one point, there we were there for a whole month, uh, sitting around, talking to everybody, um, going through the processes, seeing how it plays out. You know, ceremony is an incredibly... Um, sacred and personal experience and it's usually from my observation it's usually kept within the communities and the families themselves so little uh, you know for us um, to be able to see that process was incredibly rare yep. uh, to share it then in form of film mm. you know is even more so so we were always mindful and respectful of of the limitations Alec um, you know briefed us on what they were mm-hmm. and you know, getting to that stage of ceremony, um, you know, the, it, it happens over a course of two to three weeks. So we knew there was going to be a culminating point, and we just we just shut the cameras off at that point. Um, also, to the degree where the elders just said, you know, that's enough. You know, you've seen enough. You know, you can walk away now. <laughs> so, and that, and you know, it was perfectly yeah. fine by us. We were capturing Zach's journey and Alex's journey. Yes. And and you know, at that point um, of his journey, he was he was happy to to just let it be. So. And how did he and Alec and everyone respond when they saw the final version of? Zach was uh, well, Zach was completely flawed. You know, uh, he's incredibly brave. Um, he's put his. He's, he basically allowed us to capture his life from 9 to 16. You know, his key growing up teenage years, he's presented um, himself on camera. And so, you know, my hat's off to Zach for allowing that to happen. And he knows what the bigger purpose was. He knew what the message had to be at the end of the film. And uh, and I, I was I was nervous when he was watching it. Uh, but he, he, he laughed, he cried, he watched it from beginning to end and at the end of it it was incredibly proud um, of what what I created with his with his dad and um, you know he he's now walking with that film you know this film was always to start a talking point um, for these topics themes and issues here in Australia and it is doing just that and both Alec and Zach are embracing it and following it around on the festival tour at the moment and talking about it in Q&A's and to all the people afterwards so oh, terrific yeah yeah and you were just talking to me before we started recording about production about budgets and and uh, negotiating um, uh, getting funding and so on and that must have been an interesting process it, it's uh, it, it was it's an incredibly difficult process making films uh, in Australia especially when it comes to funding and everything so you know we uh, over the years uh, it was self-funded for a long time uh, for about six years it was self-funded uh-huh. once we then had a product and was able to prove um, to the funding bodies we then got development money from Screen Australia right and Screen New South Wales at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that allowed us to kickstart our, our journey up, up north. So with that development money, we got up there, um, we started capturing key components of, of ceremony that were leading up to it. Yep. Uh, we came back and then um, Screen Australia uh, got behind us and we were able to get a little bit more funding. We were also a part of a system um, called uh, Good Pitch in Australia. We were one of the first films off the rank, okay. um, which was exciting back in 2014. Oh, so, right. um, you know, it's an incredible opportunity. It's supported by um, Ian Darling and Melinda Wink over there at Shark Island Institute. And, 
you know, they um, they saw the the hope in the film. They saw what we were trying to do, uh, the message and everything. So they took us under their wing. They prepped us, and and then we um, we were able to stand in the room full of philanthropists and and uh, and give our pitch. And and thankfully, we received uh, pretty much the remaining of our budget from that point forward. So that allowed us to to finish the film, um, spend quite a bit of time uh, getting it right. Uh, we introduced. Uh, a couple of components into the film like animation and everything mm-hmm. um, with the support of NITV as well uh-huh. and uh, and that it just it, it gave like a different dynamic to the film it allowed mm-hmm. viewers to um, al- almost submerse themselves in Zach's world a little bit and you know it was important that those components existed in the film to set the tone and, and, and just then let people go on that journey right through to the end so um, you know, the, you mentioned the production just there. The production was incredibly difficult. You know, we're talking uh, an environment that is constantly above 45 degrees. Most cameras only operate around 40 to 42 degrees. So, you know, we had to, we had to devise a lot of techniques just to make sure that the dust and the heat um, didn't affect our equipment. Um, we kept the crew cr- quite tight. We only had uh, five of us up there on country for the main part of ceremony. Besides that, it was myself um, filming a lot of it. Uh, it was myself and then the DOP going away and filming a lot of it. So right. we had to always keep it quite small. Um, we were dealing with a lot of people some stages and we were dealing then just with individuals like Zach and Alec. And uh-huh. I always wanted to make sure that a, a crew didn't impact that. Um, you know, even in the form of cameras, we were filming with very small form cameras when it was just one on one, just to make sure that there wasn't a distraction in the room. Um, so yeah, the production was was tough, and mm. and because we filmed over such a long period of time, we filmed over ten years. You know, you see the evidence of that yeah. production growth in the film. Yeah. You know, we go from handy cams and the Canon 5D in the early days um, and then we, we ended up filming on the on the Red Dragon and everything by the end of it in full 6k um, beauty so wow. yeah it, it, you know we had to we had to um, we had this incredible opportunity to uh, witness something that's never been captured on film before uh, in terms of the ceremony and, and the culture and the lore up there in the Gulf of Carpentaria so I just I wanted to capture that as best as we possibly could uh, and, 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 and present it in the most cinematic way um, as possible. So. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you very much. And speaking of journey, the next part of the journey, I suppose, is distribution and how will the film be screened? Yeah, well, we're hoping uh, to sign a distribution deal which would, would see the film released early next year, mm-hmm. um, around February or March. Um, we've also uh, got a broadcast deal with NITV, which will see it uh, broadcasted on SBS and NITV uh, late next year. So we've had a we've been incredibly fortunate to um, have a, a good festival season. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're up to number 11 now, which is great, and uh, and it's taken myself, Alec, and um, Zach all around the world. So yeah. we're just enjoying the festival stage. Uh, it's slowly easing its way into the uh, into the world, and, and you know everybody that has the opportunity of seeing it, the festivals really celebrates the film, and mm-hmm. and it changes their perception, and it starts that talking point, and that's exactly where we. We wanted to wanted it to be so. Aaron Peterson, thank you so much for talking with me, Great. director. Thank you. Ceremony. Great. Thank you very much. Into the blood, into the blood.